Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to continue the discussion of insurance and we're going to focus on homeowners insurance and renters insurance. First, let's take a quick look at renters insurance before we delve into homeowners insurance. Uh, most of us probably start renting before we buy our first home. Uh, renters insurance are relatively simple. Uh, it covers loss of personal assets. Uh, obviously, as a renter, you're not responsible for the building. Uh, they also have some limited coverage on loss of use, which can be useful um, and also provide limited liability for if someone does get injured um, inside your own space. So again, uh, most uh, rental properties have their own liability insurance. So this is not something that is very common. Uh, and therefore, renter's policy is rather inexpensive. Um, what is important about a renter's policy is to know exactly what events are covered. So for example, <laughs> this is, uh, this can be a little bit complicated. Uh, so let's say your laptop, uh, you, your laptop can be a part of your renter's insurance and if your laptop gets stolen uh, it will cover for re reimbursement uh, if your laptop is in the apartment when there's a fire and it gets damaged that will cover it uh, of course if you are being un uh, careless and you drop your own laptop that is not part of the coverage Another thing that is important to keep in mind is that a renter's insurance does not cover any damage or theft caused by your roommate. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. But overall, you should look into renter's insurance once again, because it's relatively inexpensive. Um, it can prevent some surprises, or especially the unfortunate kind. Next, let's take a look at homeowner's insurance. Um, homeowner's insurance can actually be quite complicated. So let's first take a overall view of the major elements in a homeowner's insurance. Um, the first is the type of coverage. So uh, what is cover under a homeowner's insurance? Uh, first is the home itself. So that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. The dwelling is the home and the structure. Um, Another is the loss of use. So this is uh, your ability to rent a home or even stay in a hotel when the house is not available for use. Um, and then the third is personal property. So these will be uh, your household uh, furniture, appliance, um, even clothing and so forth. Um, this is in general. So for example, uh, you may have $50,000 that covers all the replacement of all your personal belongings. Uh, you can add specific uh, items. Those are called floaters. Uh, so let's say you have a an, an art painting that is very expensive. You can have coverage for that specific item. Uh, some people have specific coverage for their wedding ring because that is a very expensive item. Uh, so the floater cover a specific item. The fourth type of coverage is personal liability. So again, this is if someone gets injured on your property, that's what it, what it covers. Um, and then there are additional customized policy or special policy depend on the location and region uh, that you may be able to get. But the first four, the dwelling itself, the loss of use, personal liability are the most typical. So these are things that will get covered. The next is the event. The um, term that is used in the insurance industry for events is perils. So perils refer to the danger that caused the damages. Uh, so name peril policy, this is very important to distinguish the two. Name peril policies only covers damages that are specifically listed. So if, it's, if the damage is caused by something that is not on the list of perils, the policy will not cover that. In contrast to a name peril policy, you can have open policy. Open policy covers everything except for events that are listed. So they are the opposite of each other. So a name peril policy only covers events that are named. 
Open policy will cover everything except those events that are named. We're going to talk about that in more details in a minute.、Uh, and then the last thing to consider is whether or not the coverage is for the actual ca- cash value or replacement cost.、Uh, in the times of inflation, let's say you're very lucky, you live in the same house for 20 years, and n- nothing bad happened. And then in year 23, for example, some、uh, your house get damaged.、Uh, of course, the cash value, the actual value, when you Originally purchased the home would be a lot less than what it costs to replace things 23 years later. So it is important to take into account、um, the impact of inflation on whether or not you want the actual cash value coverage versus a replacement cost coverage. Most people opt for replacement cost coverage. Since Under what event will the damages be paid out is very important. Let's take a deeper look at what are the commonly named perils in insurance policies. So this is particularly for homeowners insurance. So if you have a named peril policy, there are two major types. So the first is basic. So the basic is fire coverage, smoke. Exposure. So is as name. So if any of this event happen and cause damages to your home property and、um, cause injury, a name policy will cover. But if anything above that, then you won't. So you may say, oh, that seems to cover everything. Well, take another look. In addition to the basics, some policy include broad coverage. So that include the、uh, things such as snow,、uh, weight of ice. So for those of us who live in the colder climate, we know that roofs can collapse because of、uh, snowstorm. And if you have a roof collapse in a northern climate, the basic perils do not include snow. It has hail. Hail is not snow. So for the insurance company, specific specific.、Uh, <laughs> It's very very specific, so you have to be careful.、Uh, another again, northern climate, your、uh, f- frozen pipes is a very common problem,、um, and that is not covered.、Um, and so, in the basic, it covers lightning strike, but the bulk、uh, coverage includes artificially generated electricity. So that means that if you have a、uh, transformer problem or a spike. In the electricity that caused damage to your house,、um, that would cover under the board, but not under basic. And again, if、uh, you have a name peril policy and the cause of damage is not any of this that is listed, it will not be covered.、Uh, in contrast, you can have an open peril policy. An open policy will cover everything except. So again, unless your the damage is caused by What is listed here? An earthquake, flood. So, earth and earthquake and flood typically require separate policies.、Uh, war, pest. So again, these are the name events. So as long as it's not caused by one of these, it will get covered. So, flood and earthquake, as we said earlier,、uh, these are usually very expensive,、um, especially in the high risk area.、Uh, Flood insurance is also available through the federal government. It's the National Flood Insurance Program. So that's really the one of the few、uh, affordable flood insurance policy available to homeowners. Even though insurance are regulated state by state, for on- homeowners insurance policy, there are few standardized forms. So just like auto insurance, you have type A, B, C, D.、Uh, homeowners insurance has.、Um, These basic forms that almost all insurance companies offer, and they vary in terms of the amount of coverage. So the first one is called Basic Form One, and as、uh, the name implies, is the most basic. And the thing that you want to pay attention to is that it provides just cash value, so not replacement cost, and is against name peril, so it's not opened. Uh, and is all the perils in the basic category, and it includes just the drowning and structure, so no bodily injury, no personal, 
no personal liability. So basic as the name implies is very basic. Uh, the next is form two. So this is the same. It's still a name peril. It's still actual cash value, but it's just expanded it to the board category. And then special form three. Three changes it from name peril to open peril. And you cover, um, again, still just drawing and structure and it's at cash value. So it start expanding the coverage form. Um, HO4, so HO4 plus HO3. So four covers the personal property. And this is against listed risk. So this again is pearl. So it's not open against everything. So a three and four will cover open peril against the structure and drilling, but then it will cover personal property against listed risk. Um, or you can go to a comprehensive form five. Um, this expands the coverage of HO3, meaning that it covers um, Drawings as well as personal property. So other structure means your garage, your garden shed, all the other structure that is on the property, your personal property. So that includes furniture, uh, appliances, and this is done at replacement cost. And you also have loss of reuse and liability. So comprehensive form five is the most common policy used by homeowners. Um, however, if you think about a mortgage company, a mortgage company uh, may not require you to cover personal property, for example. Uh, so a, um, a mortgage company may say special form HO3 may be sufficient. However, uh, most mortgage company actually requires something that is comprehensive because they want uh, all the structure that is included as well as replacement costs. So those are the two important items. Uh, if you don't live in a single residency, uh, a single family home, you may need a condominium coverage. Condominium coverage, um, protects your personal property and anything that is owned by you as the condo owner. We went, when we went over home, uh, home purchase, we talk about what part of a building is owned by the condominium owner and what is owned by the association. So a, a condominium form includes everything that is owned by the owner, but not by the condominium association. So as we mentioned earlier, mortgage company usually require enough home insurance to, as part of your mortgage agreement to make sure that it does include replacement costs and all the drilling and other structure. So uh, comprehensive form five and condominium form, form six are the two forms that you probably require, will be required to purchase as part of your mortgage agreement. So what affects your insurance premium? Um, first of all is the amount. So, and the type of coverage. So we talk about if you want the comprehensive form five with replacement cost, uh, that will be, that will give you the most coverage and the most usable coverage in, in, re in reality. Uh, and that will uh, definitely be higher than the basic, uh, but also it provides you with, um, important things that you need. The other is the value of the house. So of course, the more expensive the house, the higher the uh, premium. Uh, one way that you can control your premium is to elect for a higher deductible if you can afford it. Uh, again, this is an unlikely event. So for example, if you make the deductible $5,000 or $10,000, uh, that can reduce your premium. Uh, the location of your house is obviously an important part, uh, depending on where you are, uh, so uh, as well as risk mitigation that you have um, undertaken uh, to reduce the risk. Uh, things, things such as uh, fire alarm, smoke detector, uh, those things will help reduce the risk and because of that it can reduce your premium.
And oftentimes it may pay to install some of those devices because the savings you get from the insurance premium may very well pay for, if not all, most of the cost of installing some of those devices. Uh, other discount uh, include multi-policy discount. So for example, if you get your auto insurance and the homeowner's insurance from the same company, you can get a discounted rate. Uh, similar to automobile insurance, you can get group discount. So again, if you belong to the same alumni association, the same employee, uh, even the same union, uh, those are all uh, groups that will provide discounts. Uh, just like auto insurance, uh, remember that you get multiple quotes so that you can compare. And also keep in mind a uh, multi-policy discount. So may, you may want to shop for your homeowner's insurance and your auto insurance at the same time. And that will give you even more bargaining power. If unfortunately you need the uh, homeowner's insurance claim, meaning damages to your house, um, what can you do and what should you do before that happen? Uh, one very important thing and oftentimes not done by homeowners is an up-to-date home inventory. This is actually part of your asset. So when you create your statement of net worth, you should have this included. So your personal property, uh, your furnishing, we may not think of those as things we, we own, but they are. And if you have an insurance policy that have replacement value, those things are all part of your net worth. Uh, so uh, everyone should have a home inventory. Um, one easy way to do is um, create a, uh, a, a document, a Word document, or a spreadsheet list room by room, the major items, uh, keep track of major purchases. Um, nowadays, a very easy way to do your home inventory is to take a picture of each room. And then you know exactly what is in the room. And in case something happened, you can easily uh, reconstruct your inventory if necessary. If you do have damages to your house, contact your insurance company right away. Uh, so the, when you contact the insurance company, they will send out a claim adjuster. They will come and estimate the damage of your home. Uh, at that time, you can present them with your home inventory so that they will know exactly what is being damaged. Um, it's also a good idea to get an independent estimate, particularly if there is structural damage. You can contact a contractor to give you an estimate in terms of how much it will cost to fix the damages. Uh, if the estimate from the insurance company differs significantly from a contractor's estimate, you may need to appeal so that you can get the repair that you need. Uh, another thing to take into account, we say why we need the comprehensive um, insurance is that is the loss of use. So if your home is damaged to the point that you cannot stay there, uh, the insurance will provide for uh, coverage for a rental property uh, you can rent during that time or even um, a hotel. So if your home is damaged, for example, by water or by fire and you cannot live in it, uh, make sure you keep all the receipt so the you can go to a hotel right away and the cost will be reimbursed by the insurance company. For individuals that have a high net worth, it is useful and sometimes important to consider having an umbrella personal liability policy. This type of policy is so as a supplement, meaning that it's in addition to uh, an automobile and a homeowner's insurance policy. The primary reason for the umbrella policy is for wealth protection. Uh, the reason for getting this umbrella policy is so that in case some, someone does get injured by your car or get hurt on your property and your existing insurance policy does not cover the entire damage, then that individual will, uh, the injured party can sue you for the additional damage out of your personal wealth. Um, and in that situation, if you have sufficient or you have a lot of personal wealth that may be at stake, then it's worthwhile to pur purchase this uh, umbrella personal liability policy to supplement your homeowners and your auto insurance. Uh, remember that this, this is a supplement, meaning that you must already have an automobile 
policy and also a homeowner's insurance policy before you can purchase the umbrella uh, personal liability policy. We'll pause here. We finish covering personal insurance. In the next video, we're going to talk about health insurance. See you soon.